Just when you thought Keanu Reeves couldn't have a bigger trilogy than The Matrix, in comes a little action franchise that could, John Wick. The world of assassins is full of deep mythology, great twists, and plenty of epic action moments. Now we're gonna cash in some gold coins to pull back the curtains and reveal some surprising facts about all three movies in the franchise. And a quick warning, there will be major spoilers for John Wick Chapter 3, starting with the very first entry. Enjoy! While John Wick movies are filled with fight after fight, they all typically lead up to one epic showdown. To help top the brilliant mirror fight scene in John Wick 2, the production put together a massive glass wall set inside the Continental for John Wick Chapter 3. Just building this room alone cost a whopping $4 million. But we all have to agree, it's definitely worth it. Not only did the room cost millions to make, but Wick gets to destroy most of those glass panels in a fight with Zero's henchmen before taking on Zero himself. The mix of the visuals, colors, and fight choreography make us all ready to upgrade to an 8K TV and watch the film in all its glory when it's finally released on home video. For many people, it's hard to picture Keanu Reeves without him doing a signature quote. Whoa! While the character doesn't use the quote in any of the John Wick movies, there are a lot of homages to it throughout the trilogy. When the name John Wick is often mentioned to others, listen for a simple and subtle response. A slightly slowed down, oh. The O reaction to the name is supposed to represent the signature Whoa line, and it's almost only spoken in response to hearing something about Wick. While you may not notice on first viewing, the line becomes really apparent once you start looking for it. It's not only a nice homage, but really shows how Wick strikes fear into the hearts of those in this world. The Continental not only provided a safe haven for assassins, but it allowed our characters to interact and converse without the threat of a gun being pulled on them. Unless, of course, you're John Wick and the rules don't matter anymore like we saw in Chapter 2. Either way, for Keanu Reeves, a safe haven like that probably felt a little familiar. In the movie Constantine, Reeves had access to another type of neutral club where no bad things could happen. In the DC Supernatural film, the club was known as Papa Midnight's. In the club, people from both heaven and hell could meet up, share drinks, and do not Need to worry about the war between good and evil. Sounds like a fun night to us. Keanu Reeves doesn't just show up in these John Wick movies to hold a prop gun and get his face plastered on movie posters. He's there to make the process as authentic as possible, and this includes doing his own stunts. Thanks to longer takes and wide shots with Reeves doing his own stunts, director Chad Stahelski has a lot to play with when planning out the movie and action scenes. There are a couple of small exceptions to Keanu's stunt choices. One, he won't do anything where he gets hit by a car. And two, he won't do anything involved with falling downstairs. He leaves those dangerous stunts to the professionals. And a quick fun fact, Stahelski was the stunt performer for Reeves throughout the whole Matrix trilogy, so these guys have definitely bonded over the years. John Wick doesn't just kill hundreds of people in the course of three movies, he does it in style. Rivaling James Bond any day, John Wick has a suit that is both fashionable and practical. The suit jacket and pants are made with a bulletproof material. Costume designer Luca Mosca put a lot of thought into Wick's suit and ultimately went with something that was sleek and simple, much like a Glock gun. For John Wick Chapter 2, some tweaks were made to the design, including a higher collar to make John Wick look even more imposing. The simple design and use of blacks also helps add shades of mystery to Wick's character. Is the world of John Wick connected to Batman? While the prospect sounds awesome, the connection is fun, but don't expect to see the Dark Knight perched up in the background of a John Wick scene anytime soon. The connection actually has to do with the Continental. The Neutral Grounds Hotel featured in all three John Wick movies may look very similar on the outside. This is because the exterior of the Continental was also used as the exterior for the stock exchange scenes in The Dark Knight Rises. The corner location and dual rising stairs are easily recognizable from both films although the interiors are clearly different. John Wick vs. Tom Hardy's Bane? Count us in! Keanu Reeves cannot escape his past, and we can't either after seeing so many Matrix connections in these films. We already touched upon director Chad Stahelski's role as a Matrix stunt actor and coordinator. Keanu Reeves also co-stars along with Matrix actors like Randall Duke Kim and Daniel Bernhardt. Not to mention, Lawrence Fishburne came on board to star in both John Wick Chapter 2 and 3. Then there are the little moments in Easter eggs. One of our favorites comes in Chapter 3 when Wick requests guns. Lots of guns. The infamous quote from The Matrix. Guns. Lots of guns. The moment works in both films, no matter how different they are. 
Halle Berry was a great addition to the John Wick franchise, and although her screen time was relatively short, she did have a big impact and the potential to expand a lot in future sequels. Berry definitely put her all into the role of Sophia, training for months and getting extremely dedicated to the on-screen partners, her dogs. Berry acted as a dog trainer to her canine companions on set, able to give them instructions, guide them around, and follow the cues as needed. The extra time she took bonding with those dogs clearly shows on screen, especially after one of them gets fatally shot. Barry has praised her time filming the movie and opened up a lot of possibilities for the character and her dogs in the future. When you want to hire a tall and massive actor to play the role of a deadly assassin hunting down John Wick, where do you turn? To the NBA, of course. The league is filled with extremely tall talent, and the filmmakers of John Wick Chapter 3 knew exactly who to call. The production ended up casting Philadelphia 76ers center Boban Marjanovic. Marjanovic was featured in the library fight scene early in the film, towering over Wick through stacks of books. His character was another assassin by the name of Ernest, and he obviously preferred some hand-to-hand -hand combat to try and get a power hold over Wick. Of course, the one-on-one -on -one battle for Wick was pretty much a layup, as he destroyed Marjanovic using a book as his primary weapon. Boban Marjanovic wasn't the only larger-than-life athlete in the John Wick movies. In the first John Wick, the Russian bouncer at the Red Circle Club is played by former professional wrestler Kevin Nash. Simply known as Francis, the Russian bouncer clearly has a history with Wick in the past and is set free as Wick enters the nightclub. And even though Nash isn't Russian, he seems drawn to the character type often. In Marvel's The Punisher movie, Nash played another Russian henchman, but unlike John Wick, he got physical in The Punisher, taking on Frank Castle in a one-on-one -on -one brawl. John Wick movies may be all about the dogs, but by the time Chapter 3 began filming, it was clear that the cats wanted their due time in the spotlight as well. A big part of the movie was filmed in Morocco, but the filmmakers came across an unexpected obstacle. Hundreds of stray cats. Not only were these cats starting to invade the set, but they were posing a threat to Sophia's dogs, distracting them and getting them a little riled up while filming. Once the Blu-ray of Chapter 3 gets released, start checking the high-res background shots to see if any of these stray felines were able to get a cameo. Casting in the John Wick movies always seems top-notch, but there are a lot of considerations along the way. For example, Halle Berry's role as Sophia was initially considered for a number of different actresses, including Marissa Tomei, Jennifer Beals, Penelope Cruz, and Uma Thurman. Who else do you think could have filled the role and done well? In the original John Wick, Ian McShane's role as Winston was first given to Jason Isaac. Although there's been no full explanation given, Isaac eventually left the role, McShane was cast, and he has played the role of Winston ever since. And for John Wick Chapter 3, the role of TikTok went to comedian Jason Mansukas. On his podcast, How Did This Get Made?, he once expressed his desire to star in a John Wick sequel, and his wish came true. Training dogs to act on film is hard enough as it is, especially in a series like John Wick where so many gunshots are blasted off. Now imagine trying to train a beagle puppy to get the perfect shots and bonding moments on film. The young puppy will definitely have a hard time following cues. To help speed up the bonding process, the filmmakers kept things pretty simple. In the scene where the beagle licks John Wick's face to wake him up, Reeves actually had bacon grease rubbed on his face. The scent and flavors had the puppy glued to Reeves and helped make their on-screen bond that much stronger. Once Keanu Reeves signed on to act in John Wick, he developed a lot of story changes and moments to flesh out the character and plot. One of the biggest changes that needed to be made? The age of the character. In the first draft of the John Wick screenplay originally titled Scorned, Wick was actually around 60 to 70 years old. His dog was also supposed to be around 17 to 18 years old as well. Reeves forced some major changes and reworked the plot so that he would still be a retired assassin, just one who was a little bit younger. Making these changes definitely helped with the action and journey Wick goes on. Plus, we've already seen the old man assassin storyline play out plenty of times in films like Red. In the first John Wick, our hero and title character is often referred to as Baba Yaga, or the one who is sent to kill Baby Yaga. The brief explanation in the movie describes it as the boogeyman, but the fable behind the Baba Yaga goes much deeper than that. The Baba Yaga of folklore refers to a witch who lives in a house made of chicken legs and other chicken parts. The witch is evil, able to trick people, and the stories are essentially told to bring fear into all those who hear them. John Wick cleverly uses this title as a great way to introduce the character and showcase how his past goes much, much deeper than we could have ever imagined. Besides his perished wife, John Wick pretty much seems like a loner. Sure, he has a few allies throughout the trilogy, but there's no mention of extended family. One question we have to ask, is he related to Tommy Wick? 
Tommy is a trained fighter who has to deliver a special package to a mobster in the 2013 film aptly titled The Package. Tommy Wick was played by former WWE wrestler and action star Stone Cold Steve Austin, and the shared last name with John Wick is no coincidence. John Wick's screenwriter Derek Kolstad also wrote The Package, purposely giving them both the same last name. So can we expect Stone Cold to join up for John Wick Chapter 4, Meet the Wicks? We certainly hope so. And while the connection to the package is compelling, John Wick also has a connection to the Mark Wahlberg movie Lone Survivor, but in a very different way. The movie was based on former Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell, who went through a similar incident as Wick when four men came to his house and shot his dog in the front yard. Luttrell chased the men down and caught them, but further violence was prevented by police arrival. The revenge for a dog's death helped propel the story we saw, with many key elements changed and wrapped around the world of assassins. Basic conclusion, no matter what walk of life you're from, don't mess with a man and his dog. If you thought Thanos' snap in Avengers Infinity War took out a lot of people, well, just give John Wick a little more time and he'll start catching up. The body counts in the John Wick trilogy are insane, with each movie racking up more piles of dead bodies than the previous one. So let's break this all down. The first John Wick was definitely high up on the body count, racking up 91 total deaths with 73 with the use of guns. John Wick Chapter 2 upped the ante with 119 total deaths and a whole lot of bullet shells. Chapter 3 3 raised the bar more than ever before with both guns and knives blazing. The total amount? 167 deaths, 124 by gun. Yikes. The John Wick trilogy may feel like a non-stop action movie, but the heart and soul of the story definitely belongs to Keanu Reeves in a role he was born to play. Reeves gives some of his best performances in the movie, and it turns out that he draws from real-life tragedy to do this. In 1999, Reeves' son was a stillborn after his girlfriend Jennifer Syme went into labor just eight months into the pregnancy. Two years later, Jennifer passed away in a car accident, adding even more grief and loss to Reeves' life. He channels these emotions to display the suffering and trauma Wick goes through after losing his puppy and wife within the same week. One of the more interesting parts about the high table and world of assassins in the John Wick movies is the lack of police presence. We don't have to worry about the feds building a case against Wick, undercover agents, or any of the typical cliches associated with these types of movies. Instead, the John Wick movies avoid the police as much as possible with one exception, Jimmy the Cop. In the first John Wick in Chapter 2, we meet Jimmy the Cop, who is pretty much comedic fodder. He investigates a noise complaint when Wick kills off a bunch of men, and then comes to question John when his house burns to ashes due to a grenade launcher in Chapter 2. Because of John's on-the-run status in Chapter 3, Jimmy the Cop doesn't return. It's just a world full of deadly assassins. The pacing in the Wick movies is something to marvel at. The writer and director give you just enough information to follow the story while keeping everything moving at breakneck speed. This is why one of the most important reasons to stay for the credits isn't to hope for a post credit scene, but it's to learn the character names. In John Wick Chapter 2, Ruby Rose plays a mute assassin who turns out to be a formidable foe against Wick. Once the end credits appeared, we quickly learned her name was Ares, even though it's not spoken in the movie. Many other characters often have basic titles for names. This includes the Administrator, or Lawrence Fishburne character simply known as the Bowery King. With a name like that, who needs to actually know his first name? In John Wick Chapter 2, one of Wick's biggest foes is Cassian, played by the actor Common. Playing a contract killer is nothing new for the actor. It's a pretty strange role to get typecast as, but Common has appeared as a contracted killer in three other movies. His first was in the large ensemble film Smoke and Aces. He follows that up with Angelina Jolie's Wanted in 2008 and the 2015 Liam Neeson film Run All Night. Despite all of this experience as a contract killer, Common still cannot hold his ground against the almighty John Wick. When John Wick defeats some of his biggest foes, they seem to often be at peace as they slowly die. And while hundreds of henchmen die within an instant, these big-time killers often have time to share a few lines with their foe in a dress suit. In the first movie, Vigo says the line, Be seeing you, John, after getting stabbed. The same line is signed by Ares in the sequel. For Chapter 3, things are changed up a bit, with Zero saying the line, I'll catch up to you, John, instead. The lines all have a similar theme and have become meme-worthy because of it. So where exactly will they see John? Maybe with his look-alike big-screen character Constantine in the depths of the underworld? Just a guess. 
John Wick has proven time and time again that he doesn't even need guns to kill his enemies. Through each of the movies, we've got to see some truly unique death scenes, and with some unique weapons to boot. Let's start with John Wick Chapter 3. In the movie, Wick is able to take out an enemy with just a book, and a few horses deliver some deadly kicks of their own. Not to mention, Wick drags a guy to his death by riding on a horse as well. John Wick Chapter 2 had the infamous pencil death scene come to life when two foes are stopped with a trusty number 2. Toss in a few explosions from the first movie, and you definitely have a variety of kills taking out enemies in all sorts of unique ways. The events of each John Wick movie have helped set up a sequel, and the same could be said for John Wick Chapter 3. While we anxiously await Chapter 4 in the series, there are a number of spin-offs and other sequels to consider. Let's start with the big screen first. Producers have already confirmed that the ballerina is already getting written. The film will follow the assassin school featured in Parabellum and showcase how these students train to become deadly assassins. On the small screen, be on the lookout for a series entitled The Continental, which will follow the events of the safe house for assassins. Both projects are definitely interesting and a great way to expand on the John Wick universe, or the uh, JWU for short. Okay, great. Now that you've watched, you've earned a coveted gold coin. Use it wisely. And let us know if there are other hyped up John Wick facts we missed. Which one is the most surprising? Also, don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great content. Thanks for watching.